Welcome to Good Morning Happy Apple. I am Robert York, your host. I hope all of you have had a pleasant day. I myself have had my eyebrows burned off at work. My cup overfloweth. Welcome once again to another installment. Welcome once again to another installment. I am not a number. I am a free man. I am not a number. I am not a number. I am your host, Robert York. I am a free man. Take you through the midnight hour to the early morning. Take you through the midnight hour to the early morning. Take you through the midnight hour to the early morning. My fellow Americans, I'm pleased to tell you today that I've signed legislation. We begin bombing in five minutes. She listened to. We begin bombing in five minutes. She listened to the radio station. One side in this campaign has been telling us that the issues of this election are the maintenance of peace and prosperity. The but I have an uncomfortable feeling that this prosperity isn't something on which we can base our hopes for the future. No nation in history has ever survived a tax burden that reached a third of its national income. As for the peace that we would preserve, I wonder who among us would like to approach the wife or mother whose husband or son has died and ask them if they think this is a peace that should be maintained indefinitely. Do they mean peace or do they mean we just want to be left in peace? There can be no real peace while one American is dying someplace in the world for the rest of us. We're at war with the most dangerous enemy that has ever faced mankind in his long climb from the swamp to the stars. And it's been said if we lose that war and in so doing lose this way of freedom of ours, history will record with the greatest astonishment that those who had the most to lose did the least to prevent its happening. Well, I think it's time we ask ourselves if we still know the freedoms that were intended for us by the Founding Fathers. If we lose freedom here, there's no place to escape to. This is the last stand on earth. And this idea that government is beholden to the people, that it has no other source of power except the sovereign people, is still the newest and the most unique idea in all the long history of man's relation to man. This is the issue of this election. Whether we believe in our capacity for self-government or whether we abandon the American Revolution and confess that a little intellectual elite in a far distant capital can plan our lives for us better than we can plan them ourselves. You and I are told increasingly we have to choose between a left or right. Well, I'd like to suggest there is no such thing as a left or right. There's only an up or down. Man's own old age dream the ultimate in individual freedom consistent with law and order, or down to the ant heap of totalitarianism. And regardless of their sincerity, their humanitarian motives, those who would trade our freedom for security have embarked on this downward course. In this vote harvesting time, they use terms like the great society, or as we were told a few days ago by the president, we must accept a greater government activity in the affairs of the people. But they've been a little more explicit in the past and among themselves, and all of the things I now will quote have appeared in print. These are not Republican accusations. For example... Just remember, there's a special place in hell for women who don't help each other. <laughs> if you do not listen to her, your event will be shut down right now. Over the course of her career, a working woman with a college degree will earn, on average, hundreds of thousands of dollars less than a man who does the same work. The full power of centralized government. This was the very thing the Founding Fathers sought to minimize. They knew that governments don't control things. A government can't control the economy without controlling people. And they know when a government sets out to do that, it must use force and coercion to achieve its purpose. They also knew, those Founding Fathers, that outside of its legitimate functions, government does nothing as well or as economically as the private sector of the economy. Up next, corrections. 
There was an error in the first episode of How 36 Questions Got 5,000 Answers. Little Spiky Wikey is not a brony. My apologies for the error on our part. The research department has been shot. This has been Corrections. Up next, First Thoughts. First, I want to apologize about the quality. I'm new at this, and it wasn't until I was in the thick of things that I realized what I needed to do. In pre-production, I needed to take the time to prep each video, as the wide range of sizes, shapes, sound qualities, and whatnot were wrecking havoc with my computer. There is a difference between splicing 8 videos and splicing 208 videos. My laptop was resting on a block of ice wrapped in towels and plastic to keep it cool enough when it took 3 hours to finish the second episode. However, pre-processing a video takes about an hour, so I'm going to need to retrench before the next episode. I estimate if I spent all the time I needed, it'd be a month before I had another video ready, so I'm only going to get the worst offenders. As for including links in the videos, I, it's just not going to happen. But as I work on the pre-production, little by little, I will include the channel names in the video sections so people can at least look it up by themselves. I said, little by little, because the goalpost is moving. I'm finding about four new videos a week now. If this accelerates, there will come a point I simply cannot keep up. At a certain point, I will instead move to using only 100 videos at a time and breaking it up into smaller videos. I hope I don't have to do that, as it will take my project, which is already looking to be about a year, and doubling the projected time. But I'm afraid I may have already crossed the Rubicon. By the way, if you're wondering, the total videos is up to 208, with 199 contributors. Total time, 2 days, 16 hours, 7 minutes, and 58 seconds. The single longest video is by the illustrious Honey Badger Radio, weighing in at 4 hours, 10 minutes, and 11 seconds. However, that was a three-person effort, making the average time per person to be slightly less than 1 hour, 24 minutes. The single longest video by an individual was Staple Chips, coming in at 1 hour, 30 minutes, and 45 seconds. First place for number of videos is a tie between Crude Oregano and Little Spiky Wikey, both at four videos each. Little Spiky Wikey wins the tiebreaker with a total of 1 hour, 24 minutes, and 45 seconds. As always, if you enjoy my screams of anguish, please feel free to make your own reaction video to 36 questions and include a link in the comments below. I'll add it to the growing list. I'm always checking for more. Next, I have received two volunteers to help me. The first was Mogo Yogo, who has offered to make an index video for me. He said he'll get to it when he gets to it, which is fast enough for me. I understand this is a monumental project, and I'm not expecting him to rush. The other volunteer is an old friend of mine from other projects. She'll be handling my reaction videos from now on. Expect to be seeing videos from Witsy Bitsy, the crippled six-legged lesbian spider. The actress is not crippled, nor a lesbian, but Witsy Bitsy is being added because of pressure from feminist watchdog groups. We haven't gotten any, so we're going to try offending them as much as possible. Which brings me up to my Patreon page. I broke down and created one called The Eldritch God. Link will be in the description. Now, we're not e-begging. The Patreon page is more of a thermostat. There are two standing offers. The first one is $3,000 gets you the actual Happy Apple. I don't expect anybody to actually take this, but if someday somebody actually costs up $3,000, that's how I'll know I've finally become a success and I'm popular enough to be able to sell crap I have for $3,000. The second is... For $10, we will make a reaction video for you on any video you wish. As people pay for this service, the price will go up. Frankly, we only have so much time to devote to this project, so the price is a reflection of how much I feel my time is worth and how little time I have. I want to keep people coming there, but I want to also give them something for their money. However, I also work uh, 70 hours a week. I volunteer at Meals on Wheels, the local food pantry, local cat rescue, and I used to volunteer on the local suicide prevention hotline. Which I have to admit was just... Well, I was just starting by taking some time away, but the time away has grown to about a year. I wish to digress at this point, uh, to state flat out, the new fentanyl-laced heroin is pure poison. I've never encountered anything like it, and I simply have no idea how to help these people. 
It's insanity in a syringe. I can't get into the details because of HIPAA regulations and non-disclosure agreements, but frankly, I'm simply not equipped to handle victims of this stuff. Anyone who says all drugs should be legalized is insane. This isn't a drug, it's mind control in a needle. I'm a very confident man who prides himself on success where other people have failed, but I know when to admit defeat. I am simply not skilled enough and not in a position emotionally to help these people. And you might ask what it has to do with suicide hotlines. All I can say is, here in Syracuse, it's gotten bad. Really, really bad. Again, I can't give more details than that. Sorry to get people down, but, well, this is my soapbox and I want to say something about it. But I digress. As I was saying, I'm busy. I'm technically a liberal, but I'm not an idiot. I'm a boots on the ground problem solver. So I suppose this is as good as plenty since I need to mention this. Why am I doing this? What is my motivation? As a liberal, I was a social justice warrior back before there was such a term. I don't know if you're aware of the place, but there was a place called Willowbrook. If you don't know, it basically Auschwitz for the handicapped. My father helped take that place apart. A link will be provided below. My father opened up over half the group homes in central New York. He did good things for people who needed help. However, um... What I was taught wasn't what most liberals learn today. We were for the rights of all individuals. The goal was to help everyone. We knew everyone wasn't the same, but the goal was to give everybody the same opportunities. Free speech was paramount because it involved the exchange of ideas. The goal was always to help everyone up, not to drag everyone down. The truth, no matter how horrible, was always the goal. Whatever got the job done best was what we wanted. I don't know where we went wrong, but we did. I want to say I'm sorry. In a way, it's my fault. It's all the old guard's fault. We just didn't pay attention. We thought that everything was going the right way. We thought that we had won. We thought all we had to do was iron out the details. There are people who need help. There is a need for welfare. However, we thought you could divorce socialism from communism. We thought you could have an economic welfare state, but keep the democracy. We thought you could create a safety net for those who were truly in need, and that's all that would be needed. And we were so proud of our own success, we never imagined how it could be corrupted. We never imagined mission creep would go this far. It might sound a bit arrogant on my part, but not without good reason. I used to hang out with the guys who made NAFTA. Well, only one now. I've done my share of changing the world. I've moved a few mountains. I thought I did my part, and now I just sort of enjoy the rest of my life. Coast along and do the things I enjoy. I like saving lives and making the world a better place. I work with the mentally and physically disabled. And I help people transitioning out of mental hospitals back into a normal life. However, the past few months have shown me that not only isn't things over, I may have made things worse. It take an hour to explain everything, but I look upon my works ye mighty and I despair. Well, as the old saying goes, I'm not as good as I once was, but just once I could be as good as I ever was. I got maybe one good fight left in me, and I know what I need to do with it. I need to tear liberalism down to the ground. At this point, it's gone too far. The rampant absolutism and fascism is simply too ingrained. It's far too late to save it. The corruption must be exposed, and when brought to light, I fear all the causes I fought for will be destroyed along with it. This is necessary. When a man embraces a code of honor, there comes a point where he must choose between the cause he fights for or the people the cause is intended to help. Liberalism was always intended to help people. Now, now we privatize that which should be run by the government, allowing greedy men to take advantage of the population. Then we turn around and subsidize things that were supposed to be at the mercy of the free market. We've taken the world and turned it upside down. The results are simply horrific. We are the enemy. Liberalism seeks the freedom to change society as it sees fit, but ignores the responsibility. We substitute rhetoric for action. We sit in ivory towers built from our own delusions, ignoring the cries of the very people we were supposed to be helping. We make others our enemies when we were supposed to only have opponents. At the end of the day, we are all human. We are all on the same side and with the same goals. The only difference was the best way to achieve it. We close our minds and turn our faces to the glory of our imagined future utopias, saying the most horrible of excuses, the ends justify the means. 
How did we become the very monsters we fought? In the end, it must end. And I will end it. In fact, most of the work has already been done. I'm an expert at group dynamics. I know how to find flaws in systems and how to exploit them. I just never imagined I'd be using it in this fashion. And that's where you come in. That's why I do supercuts. It's why I started on 36 Questions. It's to show those of you out there who know something is wrong that you are not alone. By myself, I can do very little, but you, all of you, oh my glorious listeners, most of you right now, as people who have made reaction videos to 36 questions, you see yourself as having very little impact. You made one video. How much effect could it have? I know what effect it can have. I know how to shift society. If you give me a fulcrum, a long enough pole, and a place to stand, I can move the world. Liberalism, PC culture, feminism, it's all just a dam. It holds back the river of society. They are trying to alter the very direction of humanity. The task is impossible. It is a high balanced state. It is a coin balanced on its edge. Any mistake, any error, and the whole system comes crashing down. You are placing cracks in that wall. The videos you make spread to others, and they in turn make more cracks. My purpose? To show you that you are not alone. There are those who wonder what is the point of even trying. Well, the point is, is that 98% of all page views on YouTube are of anti-feminist videos. Last I checked, 1.8% in the past month were pro-feminism. By the way, that's just page views focusing only on pro or anti-feminist videos, not of YouTube as a whole. See, we have won the battle for YouTube, but nobody even noticed. It's a numbers game. It's never one man or one person. It's a wave. It's a cause. It's an idea. It's a concept. Ideas have life. Concepts grow. You are the idea. You are the cause. So that's my purpose. That is my goal. I don't want to make a great channel, I'm only one man, but together we are legion. I don't want to lead you, I want you to go out and lead others. I want you to know that each of you is doing great things. Every page view, every reaction video, every criticism leveled, and every lie debunked widens the cracks. Nothing will happen for a long, long time, but eventually it will come crashing down. The coin will fall. The dam will collapse. The center cannot hold. Already there are major players who see the shift. MTV is abandoning more and more of its liberal programming in favor of music videos. They see the writing on the wall. Chump showed the world that PC culture is all bark and has no bite. Feminism is starting to see the money dry up as supports begin to suspect that they have been had. The cracks are there. We just need to make them a little wider. One day the cracks will start to join, and it will all come crashing down. I fear what will happen on that day, but I fear more what will happen if that day never comes. Speak truth as softly or as loud as you can. Others will hear. Others will join. That is the power of truth. My fulcrum is truth. I have taken my stand. Join me and add your weight to mine. Together, we shall move the world. This has been First Thoughts. Up next, public service announcements. The Wasteland Whale Watchers are on a recruiting drive. They would like to remind YouTube that a fair number of channels are still powered by whale oil, and until we finally figure out how to harness outrage as a power source, YouTube will still need oil, and that means we need whales. So if you have some spare time, why not go on to the Wasteland Whale Watchers and spend some time looking for these majestic creatures. Catch sight of their long and supple forms. Listen to their peaceful and ancient songs as they perform many of their daily activities such as eating krill and mocking Japanese whaling ships by making rude comments about the sailors' ancestors. If you are lucky, you will catch sight of these giants of the deep as a portal from the Bermuda Triangle opens up. When the sun catches it just right, you can see a beautiful rainbow arch across the sky, illuminating 
the azure dome far above your head. It will quickly be followed by the sickening thud of a whale hitting the ground at terminal velocity in a spray of seawater and whale viscera. A double rainbow, what does it mean? It means no lag on YouTube tonight. So join the fun. Help the YouTube community. Attend the Wasteland Whale Watchers Mixer this weekend and bring your appetite. We will have free cookies, desiccated whale flesh drowning in Karma Clayton's famous homemade gravy on miniature salty Kimowak rolls, and cornbread muffins. Mmm, -mm. who doesn't like muffins? This has been a public service announcement. Up next, plugs. I've been giving it some thought and I'm going to be plugging a few shows I like. I'm not expecting anything in return, but these are good guys and good shows, and I like people who are looking for time to waste to consider them. First up, a Gallo Tree. I wish I had more time to listen to the podcast. I love the show and the direction. They just came out with a comic book. I now want a t-shirt that reads, I misinterpret dead people. It's a slow build, but it has been steady improvement every episode and every season. In the interest of full disclosure, I worked on a fan-created podcast series based on them called The Box of Cassettes. I'm going to upload it to the channel someday. I rather liked the series, and I never quite gave it enough effort. Also, as soon as the rights revert back to me on a radio drama script I wrote, the Gallo Tree guys are going to be helping me produce it. I'll upload it here when I'm finished. Expect that in a few months. Link in the description below. Second on the list is Spectre Etc., a podcast about James Bond films. They're doing every James Bond film in sequence. I haven't been able to keep up lately, but seriously, about episode three, they hit their stride. Yes, the podcast is hours long. However, it's a high quality two plus hours. They really get into details about the movies, and if you're a James Bond fan, you should check them out. Link in the description below. Third plug, The Misadventures of Redemption. As a fellow skeptic, I have to make a plea to everyone to take a stop by his channel and say some encouraging words. Our fellow brother has found his channel under siege of an attack by Cynthia G. supporters. If you want to know about Cynthia G., check out my supercut of Dear White People, You Are Not Superior. He had an entire response video about all the hate posts he's been getting, so if you agree that Cynthia G. is the female black Hitler, stop by his response to the hate mail video and let him know about your support. Link in the description below. Finally, the director's toast for the best video out of the 36 5000 series is I'm Better Than You Is. This is by far the single most awesome reaction video of them all. True, Honey Badgers did a far longer version, and Dr. Jam had more hard-cutting facts. But frankly, this video is pure uncut testosterone. When it was over, I cried a single manly tear. Then I crushed a beer can against my forehead and began chopping a cord of wood up with my balls. I eagerly wait news of his ascension to divinity. Watch his video to figure out what I mean by that. Link in the description below. Now, if there's anything you'd like plugged, make a comment in the description. No promises, but if I consider it worthy of endorsement, I'll bring it up in the next episode of Happy Ammo. This has been Plux. And now, a word from our sponsor, the U.S. Postal Service. The U.S. Postal Service has announced a change in their offered product, Return Receipt Requested. From now on, if you are not present when the package is delivered to your home, it will be left on your doorstep. A large vulture will then be released. It will ascend into the sky to circle slowly about, far too high for the unaided human eye to perceive. When you, or anyone for that matter, touches the package, the vulture will descend rapidly and strike like fiery vengeance from an offended demiurge. The vulture will then tear out a liver, no more than one, before returning to the post office where it, your liver, will be sent back to the original sender as confirmation the package was received. This has been done for your convenience and to improve your postal service experience. U.S. Postal Service, we don't go postal anymore. The pain is just too intense. This has been a word from our sponsor. Up next, final thoughts. My wife is going in for surgery next week, so not only will there be no episode of How 36 Questions Got 5,000 Answers this week, but it's unlikely next week either. Nothing personal, but this is a hobby and it doesn't pay very well. 
I want to start a contest, so as you watch the videos, feel free to nominate your favorite clips. So it'll be easier to find, please start a fresh thread of every nomination. Only one nomination per person per video. I'll include a best of section in each Happy Apple episode. Include the word nomination in all caps at the top, and include the time the clip starts and ends so I know which clip to add to the list. Finally, I wish to reflect on the question from the second video itself. The first question is obviously pure clickbait. It was designed to get you so angry that you cannot help but not watch the rest of the video, which of course brings us to wonder if it was too successful. Now certainly there are videos that gain more dislikes. There are more offensive subjects. But the fact is, people hate this video. Not the topic. The video itself is what is so offensive. Normally people would just downvote and move on, but not this video. This video made you care. It made you care in a negative fashion, but it made you care. It made so many people that cared that they actually made the effort to make videos. If the response to a three minute video totaled up to over two and a half days, imagine how many man hours went into producing those two and a half days of videos. Even if you assume that 10 hours of the original video was reproduced over and over, it's still a massive amount of angry. All over a mere three minutes of video. So in that regard, it has been quite successful as far as clickbait goes. However, I think it has done more harm to its cause than BuzzFeed Yellow actually realizes. More than a few people have created videos for the first time just to respond to this video. How many anti-feminists has this video created that we don't know about? In marketing, they say for every negative letter you get, at least 100 customers who think the same way never say anything. Can we safely assume that there are at least 20,000 new anti-feminists because of this video? I would say so. I claim that this is the most hated video on YouTube. Not disliked, hated. You must care to hate, and nothing shows someone cares than spending time to show how much you're unhappy. This video may be the single best weapon against feminism ever created. It is simply the perfect recruiting tool. I interviewed a few females I know, female bosses and superiors. I did this with the intent of seeing what the effect of watching this video would have on them. These are women who, in my opinion, were moderate liberals. The effect ranged from dismissal as, obviously this is a joke, to being downright disturbed. Even the ones who tried to dismiss the video did their best to distance themselves from it, but the overall effect was that it left them rattled. These are women who I would never expect to simply abandon their liberal principles, yet all of them, in some fashion or another, suffered a blow to their paradigms because of this video. Most expressed disbelief that there was even an organization that could even produce it. The problem with feminism is that they have been infected with absolutism, absolute faith in their cause, a lack of internal review. Yet this video consistently causes doubt in anyone I show it to. Doubt is the first step to change. So, if you get a chance, recommend it to people you know. Now, before I go, the following clips are my unscripted video comments that I made as I was working on these first two episodes. I wanted to include them at the end just so you can have them as a first-hand account of my mindset as the project goes on. It's more of a rambling than anything purposeful. A little humor as well. Uh, feel free to skip the rest, it's not very interesting, but I wanted to include it just because, well, I recorded it. Might as well use it. In fact, some of it you might find a little redundant. Ah well. A, a pleasure talking with you, I hope you have a pleasant day. This has been Final Thoughts. I was going to try and do this in order, but I, I gotta make a comment on this. Uh, the first speaker, the woman, who I call Spanish Lie, because I need a bucket of Spanish fly in order to ever consider getting in bed with her. I, my job is to work with people who can't speak. I deal with people who have various forms of disabilities, and trying to communicate with people who can only commute non-verbally is probably about 75% of my job. So, I've spent pretty much my entire career learning how to read body language. And that is why I hate Spanish lie. I hate her. Mostly because she's a complete hypocrite. 
Now I'm not even going to get into the body language thing. I'm just going to I'm going to take one still of her and I'm going to break this down. Now, first of all, that silk t-shirt. What the hell is that? It looks like she's got like an entire army of quill men. They're they're half man, half porcupine standing around silk print and they're just kind of I don't know. Mackin. I, 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 it looks like a dance party where in the background you're every day I'm shuffling and they're all just kind of standing around just shuffling their feet around and, and nobody's talking to anybody because you know it's, it's, a, it's a total sausage fest or in this case a uh, quill fest and, um, and basically what I'm saying is, is that she's got a shirt covered with pricks um, she's got you know feminist oh no don't culturally appropriate yet there she is it looks like a bone choker and I don't recall a lot of Spanish people having bone chokers um but what really I mean the hair let, let's go with the fact that you know get some conditioner lady but beyond the fact that she looks like that if she there was this guy when I was in college I was working my way through college and I was working at an Arby's and there was this guy here who we called Pillowhead because he never bathed for like centuries and his hair had become so matted that he had a literal pillow of hair just just this mass of hair on the side of his head we call him pillow head we never say that to his face because that was rude but he clearly had some serious issues although the man was loaded he had a roll of hundred dollar bills so you know i wish i had been able to help that guy it was only seven like 18 19 at the time so but uh, every time I look at her, I am reminded of Pillowhead. I am certain that if she was driving in the, pa if I was driving and she was in the passenger seat and she leaned her head against the window to rest, when she got out of the car, I would find a huge grease stain where her hair touched my window, and I wouldn't, I couldn't just wipe it off with a Kleenex. I would have to go get Windex. That is what her hair looks like. It is, but it isn't even, it isn't even the hair. I mean, she's got these seven, seven pimples or whatever on her forehead that remind me of a projection of what the Big Dipper will look like in about three or four million years when the stars move. Um, and she got, it, it, I, she doesn't really have any makeup on her face except, well, her lipstick, which of course is uh, the right shade of pink for, uh, that is closest matched to a vagina. Um, very popular shade when you're trying to be attractive to men. Uh, she could definitely use some powder on her nose because I can count the number of light sources reflected off of it. But that's not really what bothers me. See, I, 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 you don't have to wear makeup. You don't have to be a good looking person. I, I'm not that shallow. It's just that she put makeup on her breasts. And I can tell she's got makeup on her breasts because all I have to do is adjust the tinting and well, there it is. Oh my God. Why is there so much, you know, why is there a difference of shade there right between her boobs? That's because of the sweat. The sweat has worn away the makeup that she has on her breasts. So her breasts, her chest area is all perfectly make up yet she can't bother to put any on her face. And God, I hate her. She just has the most condescending attitude. Yet here she is, and it probably wasn't her choice. I'm willing to bet it wasn't. I'm willing to bet whoever the director was sent her to makeup and makeup did the standard try to draw attention to the boobs sort of makeup thing where you make the boobs look great but you make the face look a little eh. So where's your attention go? You goes down. And of course she's got her shirt open so she can show off the boobs and I'm willing to bet it wasn't her choice. It was whoever was in makeup. But the fact of the matter is you're trying to be a feminist and here you are being the very epitome of of a user okay you're you're deliberately using all the tactics necessary to be a user so ah oh god what a hypocrite what a freaking hypocrite and i'm going to have to break her down frame by frame oh god i'm not looking forward to this i am not looking forward to this I will save that for question, for the first question. But I, I just have to point that out because I have seen her face in slow motion so many times as I've been doing this editing. I cannot stand her.
And now we turn to political news. And they're off. The early breakaway from the pack is Ted Cruz and Hillary Clinton. It's Cruz and Clinton going into the turn. But wait, coming up the outside is Donald Trump. Trump is followed closely by Bernie Sanders. They are way on the outside and moving up fast. Those two are real outsiders. The middle of the pack is packed, but Clinton is having a problem capitalizing on her early lead. Sanders is moving in and closing the gap. And amazingly, Trump just took a dump. Half the horse is just wiped out, sliding around in his wake. Boy, those are some angry jockeys, folks. Sanders has lost some ground, but still in the race. It's Clinton and Trump neck and neck. They are riding hard into the final turn. But wait, here comes Cruz, followed tightly by Sanders. It's going to be a four-way finish. Cruz, Clinton, Bernie, and Trump. It's Trump, Clinton, Bernie, and Cruz. It's Clinton, Trump, Clinton, Trump. It's neck and neck. It's coming down to the wire. It's going to be a photo finish. It's, it's, it's. It's going to the super delegates, folks. That's right. Your vote didn't matter and the outcome will be decided in a smoke-filled room because you didn't even bother to show up for the midterm election. I guess we'll be told who won in a few months. Back to you, Ron. Who is the sleekest cat in the house? Who is the cat that eats all the mouse? Who is the cat that sleeps on the bed? Who is the cat that chews boxes dead? It's Chewy the Cat. It's Chewy the Cat. This week on Chewy the Cat, Chewy the Cat discovers that his show's ratings are failing, and the writers are desperate to keep their jobs. Despite contrived kowtowing to liberal feminists, adding diversity without reason or plot, this has proven disastrous as far as the ratings go. As their world comes crashing down around them, they are left with no other choice but... The nuclear, the nuclear option. option. Ah, oh, lesbian must die. Tune in for a very special Chewy the Cat, where a lesbian that the GLBT community was promised would never be killed yes, it is. is killed. Kill, 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 kill. Just to raise controversy and help flagging viewership numbers. See feminists go insane and call oh. for an end to killing oh, of fictional lesbians, what a face. thus helping Chewy the Cat's uh. show gain the very ratings it so desperately needs. And nothing will ever be the same again. On Chewy the Cat, it's Chewy the Cat. Watch Chewy the Cat tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern. 8 p.m. Central on NBS.